Hopefully your renovations go smoother than mine. So hello internet, I'm back from vacation, I'm back in the shop, and it's time to get busy. So a couple of months ago I gave an update on the whole painting the bathtub thing that I did a few years ago and I concluded that it was basically time to rip it out. Well, it's now torn out. I, I didn't film the tear out of the bathtub because I didn't really think it was going to be that interesting. Famous last words. So like all of you, I watched some YouTube videos about bathroom demolition and I got some great ideas and then I put that into practice. I first ripped out the wall at one end of the tub and then I ripped out the wall at the other end of the tub and that worked great. And then I started on the back wall and that came down in chunks because the drywall was frankly a bit waterlogged and I was a little concerned but I figured well I guess a little bit of water had gotten behind, you know, 35 year old tiles over the years. And then, you know, then I pulled down the ceiling and that came in pieces also and it was frankly rotten, like rotten drywall I mean. Now the ceiling, it was just paint, it was painted drywall and there had been a couple of places where it was flaking and again I figured water is getting into the drywall, uh, we're all really tall so the water is splashing off of us and yeah, then I, just to be sure, I pulled down the first layer of pink insulation, pink fiberglass that was in the ceiling, and it was bone dry. Okay, so, water came from the tub, I figured. Everything was good. Famous last words again. So the next day, I took out the tub. And I'll put in some still photos here, because again, I wasn't filming it. Um, it wasn't exactly fun, but I did get it out. I had to bend in the one corner of the tub, but I got it out. And the next day my son came, or the afternoon, my son came over and we hauled the tub away and out to the city waste depot. So far so good. Later that afternoon we had a little rainstorm and then I got to hear those words that nobody ever wants to hear from their spouse. Honey, I hear a drip. I think the roof is leaking. And shortly after that is when I learned that standing in the backyard and looking at the roof of your house and looking for curled shingles and thinking everything's fine because there aren't any curled shingles, that doesn't mean that the roof is fine. Our, shing our shingles were not curling, they were shrinking. They were standard, you know, three tab asphalt singles and the little lines, the little gaps in between each tab they were like four times the size that they were originally. And when I got up on the roof for a close look, I mean, there were, the shingles had shrunk upward as well. And I found a few spots where there were actually nails exposed. And yeah, the skipping ahead, the roofer figured that there had been like a slow leak for a long time, just a slow seep, not a gush or anything. You know, now that it's much later, I'm kind of glad it turned out the way it did. Uh, because, you know, the roof could have leaked over the kids' bedroom over there, it could have leaked over our bedroom over there, or over our bathroom over there. Instead, the roof leaked exactly where we were already planning to rip out the tub and gut back to studs. Um, really, we couldn't have had a better leak. <laughs> and that's not something that you would normally say. Uh, but now, in addition to a bathroom renovation, we had an emergency roof replacement to do, or rather half a roof, because the front half of the roof, that was done nine years ago when we had an addition put on top of the garage, so the front half of the house is fine, it was just the back half of the roof that needed to be replaced. And fortunately, uh, I happened to know a roofer at our church, and after he got done laughing at me, once I showed him the pictures of the condition of our roof, he agreed to come by and look at things, you know, the leak was discovered on a Saturday. He came by on Monday to inspect it, give us a quote. And then on Thursday, he started redoing our roof. Uh, nice roofers will bump you to the front of the line if there's an actively leaking roof. Um, and I know some people are gonna say, well, why didn't you, you're a woodworker, you're a do-it-yourselfer guy, why didn't you do it? And it's like, well, if those people want to get on a 612 pitch roof that's two stories above the ground, more power to you. Um, I was happy to hire this out. And, and really, I mean, serious, all seriousness, um, there is no way that I could have gotten this job done as quickly and as professionally as it was done. I mean, remember, we discovered this on a Saturday and by the next Friday, so like six days later, we had the roof replaced. Okay, so the tub is out, the roof is replaced. That's the end of this story, right? Um, 
Well, kind of. So the last bit of this story for this update is the exhaust fan. The exhaust fans in our bathroom, let me bring the camera back down. The exhaust fans in our bathrooms have always been kind of a bit underpowered and so I wanted to replace them as part of this renovation. They're 35 years old, just like the house is. Um, so again, I watched some YouTube videos, I checked some recommendation, I went out and bought this nice fan, 110 cubic feet, low noise, and get this, you can install it from down here. No need to access the attic. Cool. However, when I started to install it, I discovered that, well, maybe I can install the new fan from below the ceiling. There is no way that I could remove the old fan from below the ceiling. Um, it was nailed. There are flanges that were nailed to the joist. There was no accessing that from below. So I had to go crawling in the attic. And so, yeah, I had to go up and go digging through six inches of cellulose to find the fan, get it disconnected and so on and so forth. And that's when I discovered that the old fan only has a three inch exhaust hose on it and the new fan wants a four inch exhaust hose. I just can't win. Um, anyways, uh, I checked other fans like, okay, maybe I don't need 110 cubic feet a minute. I looked at a 90 cubic feet a minute, a 70 cubic feet a minute from the same manufacturer and they're both saying, no, no, you need a four inch exhaust hose on it. Okay. There's just another renovation headache to deal with. And so, you know, off to the store to buy some four inch insulated duct. And uh, so now there was gonna be even more crawling around in the attic because I had to go find the outlet, disconnect it, disconnect it at this end. This is, this is actually the excess. It's already been done in the attic. Connect up the new hose, feed it through here. And uh, while I was doing that, I could rip out the old one and now I've got the new one installed. And I'm not looking forward to the fact that I still have to do it in my bathroom because I'm not renovating my bathroom, but I did want to replace the fan at the same time. And that brings us up to date. I know it's an incomplete story, but that's all I got for you so far. And I thought it was time to put it out an update and uh, let you know what's going on. Hopefully in a few weeks, I can show you a beautiful renovated shower. And oh, by the way, we're not actually replacing the tub with a tub. We're actually putting in a shower base. No bathtubs in this house anymore. Our kids are mostly grown. And even when they were younger, they never took baths. And uh, so yeah, we're ditching the tub altogether. So feel free to yell at me in the comments and tell me how wrong I am. Uh, we figure that uh, if we ever sell this house and the new owner wants a bathtub, they can put one in. So that's it for this one. As always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time in my shop or in my renovation. And we'll see you on the next one.